In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome to the broadcast of the Holy Mass from the chapel in the Archbishop's residence, the Cathedral Rectory. Father Ingalls, our vocations director, is here. And Monsignor Skinecki, Vicar General, who is also our homilist today. The three of us live here in the rectory. And Mr. Rob Herps, the editor of the Catholic Week, is our director. And so on this feast day of St. Luke, who in St. Mark, who is inspired by the gospel, uh, by the Holy Spirit, wrote his gospel, we come together praising God's goodness and God's gift of his word to us. And we ask God to always lead us into an acknowledgement of our sins. So we God, God's mercy and healing. Let us admit we are sinners and so prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on Lord, earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You, ta you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who raised up St. Mark, your evangelist, and endowed him with the grace to preach the gospel. Grant, we pray, that we may so profit from his teaching as to follow faithfully in the footsteps of Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, clothe yourselves with humility in your dealings with one another, for God opposes the proud but bestows favor on the humble. So humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your worries upon him because he cares for you. Be sober and vigilant. Your opponent, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in faith, knowing that your brothers and sisters throughout the world undergo the same sufferings. The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory through Christ Jesus, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you after you have suffered a little. To him be dominion forever. Amen. I write you this briefly through Sylvanus, whom I consider a faithful brother, exhorting you and testifying that this is the true grace of God. Remain firm in it. The Chosen One at Babylon sends you greeting, as does Mark, my son. Greet one another with a loving kiss. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The response is, forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. 
Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The heavens proclaim your wonders, O Lord, and your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can rank with the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the sons of God? Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Bless the people who know the joyful shout. In the light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. At your name they rejoice all the day, and through your justice they are exalted. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may worthily and well proclaim this holy gospel. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus appeared to the eleven and said to them, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands. and If they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God. They went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Because they came from very different economic, ethnic, and religious backgrounds, neither of my parents' families seemed to get along with the other. And so when I was born, my parents decided to name me a name they thought might help unite the families. I was named after my mother's father, William Sutherland, and my father's father, Joseph Skinecki. William Joseph Skinecki. Seemed like a good idea until the Skinecki family said I should have been named Joseph William. <laughs> Such is how it works sometimes with families. A couple years later, when my brother was born, my parents had a second chance at trying for a name. And they decided to choose a name that was no one's name in the entire family, Mark. St. Mark, we know, of course, is the author of the gospel. Most would say the earliest gospel written. And also, tradition says he was martyred in Egypt and was clearly, through the writings as we heard in the first letter of Peter today, a companion of St. Peter. But he also, he's also known as a patron of lawyers and prisoners. But I'd like to think, too, that St. Mark is also the patron of the second chance. Part of his story goes back to the Acts of the Apostles. In Acts chapter 13, when Paul and Barnabas are set on their first, uh, their first missionary journey. They take John Mark, our current, the, uh, St. Mark we honor today, with them on that first missionary journey. But Mark leaves the journey after a time. And then a few chapters later, after the Council of Jerusalem, when the second missionary journey is, is launched, Barnabas, whose name, by the way, means son of encouragement, wanted to take Mark along with them again. But St. Paul didn't want Mark because he had deserted them somewhere in Asia Minor earlier. And the disagreement was so strong that they split up, Paul and Barnabas. And Barnabas took Mark with him and went to Cyprus. Barnabas gave Mark a second chance. But that's not the end of the story, of course. We heard how St. Mark was with Peter. We heard how, and we know that St. Mark wrote the gospel and how tradition says he was martyred. But if you read the end of the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy, you'll find one other line. Tell Mark to come and bring the parchment with him that would be very useful to me. Even in the end, St. Paul gave St. Mark a second chance. 
Sometimes we're not so good at giving people second chances. And I think today is a good day for us to ask ourselves how good we are at forgiveness in general, maybe second chances in particular. Sometimes we don't need to do so. We know that there's no way that we should be associated with some person or some situation ever, ever again. But sometimes out of love and charity and the sense of Christian forgiveness and in the spirit of Barnabas and, and, and everyone else that gives us good example, we need to give others and other opinions the benefit of the doubt, a second chance. And sometimes we'll realize that that wasn't the right decision and that perhaps it's time to consider a third chance or just to go our separate ways. But who knows? We might still end up with a missionary companion. We might still end up with a gospel author. We might still end up with a martyr for the faith. And we'll be a patron ourselves of the second chance. Relying upon the love, the mercy, the power of God, let us offer our prayers to our Father in heaven. For the church and its members, that through its actions and sacraments, reconciliation and faithful witness of the gospel will always be proclaimed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For our nation, its leaders, and leader, leaders throughout the world and state and local and national governments, for wisdom in the, their decision making, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who have harmed us, for all who have disappointed us, for all who need our forgiveness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the end of the coronavirus pandemic, for all who are suffering from it physically, economically, and all those who care for them, for all the sick and all the suffering, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, particularly those close and dear to us, so they might see God face to face in heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we ask you to be merciful with us, to give us a second chance. Help us to be just as merciful towards one another as we offer our prayers through Christ our Lord. this water and wine may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you Lord God of all creation for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands you have become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you Lord God of all creation for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity, cleanse me of my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. As we venerate the glory of St. Mark, we offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of praise and humbly beseech you that your church may always persevere in the preaching of the gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church 
to stand firm on apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on earth and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the host of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, to, to make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, but they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial, the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, her nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Mark, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Peace be with you, Bill. Victor, peace be with you. Rob, peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ. Amen. past our lips as food, O Lord, that we possess a purity of heart, that what is given to us in time may be a healing for eternity. We pray for God's protection for ourselves, our loved ones, our neighbors uh, during this time of the coronavirus. And we look forward to one day soon, God willing, that we will resume public masses. In the meantime, let us pray together the prayer of spiritual communion written by St. Alphonsus. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that what we have received from your holy altar may sanctify us and make us strong in the faith of the gospel which St. Mark proclaimed through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reminder that at 835, we'll have the broadcast of our novena for the healing of our hearts and home. We invite you to join with us in praying that novena be with you and with your spirit. May the blessing of God be upon you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended.
Thanks, Thanks be to God. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, virgin and mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints.